When it comes to dealing with a violent encounter, unfortunately, as an armed citizen, we don't necessarily have very many choices in the situation itself. The criminal chooses the who, what, when, where, why, and how. It's our job to be as ready as we can be for that situation. One of the ways that we can be ready is to make sure that we have a defensive firearm that is efficient as it possibly can be. We often talk about the function of that firearm, maybe we talk about the capacity of the firearm, but very few people talk about the actual fit of the handgun and how that affects efficiency. A handgun that fits properly is going to absorb recoil more efficiently, it's going to allow for faster follow-up shots, more precision when you need it, and if by chance that handgun happens to malfunction, you'll be able to take care of that more easily as well. So let's take a look at the three characteristics that can make a handgun fit well. The first thing we want to take into consideration is the fact that the handgun is designed to be fired. When you get ready to fit a defensive handgun, make sure that that handgun is unloaded. You can see we've got a clear firearm here. We're going to go ahead and run the slide forward. You also want to make sure that you have a safe direction to work in, just in case there's some kind of an error that's made, you have that extra little safety measure in place. We need to be able to fire this handgun when we need to defend ourselves. And that means we want to make sure that we have our finger in the proper place on the trigger. When we put that finger on the trigger, we want to use the pad of the finger. Probably some place between the tip and that first joint. The heavier the trigger pull, the closer to the first joint you're probably going to want to have that finger. Proper placement gives you precision and faster follow-up shots. The next thing we want to look at when it comes to the efficiency of a handgun is to take a look at how that handgun fits into the web of our hand. We want that gun, the back strap of the gun, to be centered in the web of the hand. We can visualize this by taking a look at the front sight and draw a line through the rear sight and up our arm. The best case scenario is for that line to continue on your arm as far as possible. The farther it continues, the more the gun is going to be centered in the web of the hand and avoid the recoil uh, and the movement of the joints of the thumb. We want this on the good, solid meat of the hand and into the bones of the wrist. The third thing we look for when it comes to the defensive firearm fitting properly is we look for the ability to be able to manipulate controls. We want to be able to make sure that we can press the magazine release so that we can reload the gun when we need to. And we also want to make sure that we can operate the slide stop so that if we need to remediate malfunctions, we can do so. And all of that should happen without having to take our hand off of the gun or shift our grip. When you're looking for that defensive firearm, if you recognize the idea that you can't control everything about a dynamic critical incident, but do take control of what you can control, you're going to find a handgun that fits better, is more efficient, and will perform better when you need it most.